There are moments when this can seem an unenviable gig, like when your team gets jumped by four goals and there's sort of all manner of weird stuff happening. I'm wondering how... And then... And then it turns. Oh, and this must goal. be the stuff that keeps you coming back time and time again. Oh, Courageous with men down and riding at home, Michael Fredericks with the signature moment as the Dockers delivered victory first up. Our coaches are in place. Brad Scott from the Bombers. Brad, great to have you in the studio. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Robbo. Yeah, congratulations Brad. on the first up win. And Justin Longmuir, uh, congratulations on a number of fronts. It's great to have you back on 360. Thanks, guys. G'day, Scotty. Righto. When your head hit the pillow last night, had you been wrung out? Had you been twisted inside out? What was the overriding emotion? Oh, yeah, it was a pretty, it was a pretty big week, to be honest. Uh, yeah, and obviously the game threw a fair bit at us yesterday. Uh, clearly four goals down is not the ideal start to the season, but, yeah, really proud of the way the players endured and stuck together and uh, grinded out a really good win. So, yeah, a couple of quiet beers last night and, um, yeah, very, very satisfied coach. When you have a four-goal deficit really, really quickly, I... I don't, can't even begin what it would be like in the coach's box because that ball was moving around really, really quickly and you didn't have a lot of defence going on. When a team comes back like that, there's processes and all that, but they've got a lot of bottle. Well, they showed a lot of bottle yesterday. Yeah, they did, and they stuck to it. And they were really calm through that first four-goal four onslaught from Brisbane, and I think we contributed to it, like rushed um, or deliberate rushed behind, um, gave him one goal and then, you know, sloppy free kick and 50 metre penalty gave him another goal. So we're in control um, of a few of those situations um, and well, our execution was just a little bit sloppy coming out of our back 50 which gifted him another two goals. So uh, it wasn't ideal but I was really proud of the way the players stuck to the task and uh, you know, we, had a, we had a really clear plan going in against Brizzy uh, and yeah, they were able to come together and stick at it and we had some shaky moments, but once we got on top, we were yeah, really um, you know, effective forward to centre and I thought our midfield pressure and Hunt was, you know, had, a, had a really high standard. So, you know, like I kept on saying, uh, the, the, the players remained on task and yeah, I was really proud of that. Is there a special sense of tension, Brad, that is just inevitable around the first game? Yeah, I think, well, there is. Um, certainly for me, there is. Um, I can't speak for every other coach, but... Look, it doesn't, I don't think it matters how long you've been in the game. There's always a sense of anxiety leading into round one because you have so much time in the pre-season. You work so hard on so many aspects of your game. And, um, you know, the season's come forward a week or two over the last couple of years, but it always seems to come around really quickly. And there's, it's just, Lee Matthews used to talk about, you know, it's the, it's the stepping into the unknown. What, what was in your control through the pre-season, some of it's now going out of your control because there's an opposition coming up. So, yeah, the, the sense of anxiety and, and nervousness going to round one is there. But if it wasn't there, I'd be concerned at the same time because it means something and, you know, to, to get away to a good start is really important. It's a really good thing you said, Dan, because I want to relate that to you, Justin. Everything's in your control and then it's out of your control. But what you try and do when you've got it in your control is build those areas so when it's out of control, you've got your leaders on the field to take control. So when all the injuries were going down, they've kicked four goals and things are going against you, I thought your leaders stood really... I know it's an easy thing to say, but your, your defensive pillars were enormous. Sarong, Brayshaw, Fife in the middle. Those, that senior group was really, really strong to the win yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. You, you lean on your senior players, but you, you don't lean on your process and your game plan and everything that you've tried to embed over the pre-season. So, yeah, I thought the, the names you mentioned really stood up and got uh, the ball going our way and really pressured Brisbane. But I thought Alex Pearce and Luke Ryan as leaders in our back line really stood up early and um, they held up under a fair bit of onslaught, especially early in that second quarter uh, when they had the first eight inside 50s of that second quarter. They really stood up as well. So, yeah, you, yeah, you do rely on those senior players to keep the younger guys calm, but also get to work and get the game on um, your terms. So I thought they were fantastic yesterday. What's the helplessness like? And the, I don't know, the sense of the macabre as one injury follows the next, follows the next, in the first game of the season? Yeah, well, it's always a little bit difficult, especially when you lose two backmen. Uh, we've got a little bit of flexibility in our team and, yeah, we asked a couple of players to play um, two or three roles um, at times yesterday and you know, it's been the first game of the season. Like we're, 
down on rotations and a few players were um, out on their legs. So I was yeah, really proud of the way they were able to control that last period of the game because um, you know Brisbane were looking to you know, go through the corridor and score and um, we were able to you know, hold up and see it, see it through. Uh, yeah, but yeah, clearly not ideal losing three players into one game and it did take a little, a fair bit of gloss off the win actually. You know, you know, a couple of those players look like they're going to be reasonably long term so it did sour it a little bit. Can we ask what you know so far, maybe one at a time? Brennan Cox, what, what do you know on this front? Yeah, so he's gone for a scan. Uh, he's going to see the surgeon this afternoon but it looks like he'll need yeah, he, uh, sur surgery on that hamstring to be able to repair it. So that's long, long term. What's what's surgery on the hamstring in your mind? Oh, I'm not a doctor, but it's somewhere between 12 to 15 weeks, I'd imagine. Yeah, that's brutal. Uh, Oscar McDonald. I oh, would probably need more information. He's going to see the surgeon this afternoon as well. He, he's got a little bit going on in that knee, and so yeah, I'm not going to uh, yeah say what it could be, because uh, it could be a number of things, to be honest, Jared at the moment. So, got my fingers and toes crossed for him. Uh, you know, clearly, his first game at the club and was playing a really important role for us and has had a super pre-season. So, yeah, hopefully we get a, a, a better result there. And have you got a sick and so sorry lad in, in Warner at the moment? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, all into the concussion protocols and, yeah, we'll take it. Um, yeah, day by day with him and yeah, we'll see uh, how long it takes. Um, yeah, it's, you know, we, we all know that concussion's uh, yeah, a tricky one, so um, yeah, we'll take it easy on him for the first few days and see how he responds. Justin, the, the news heading into the game was your one-year contract extension, which gives you this and next. There's been much debate around that. I was just curious, for you, what does it do for you and your coaching? What does it change to have that security? Yeah, like you said, I, 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 see, I see it as a two-year contract because um, the club's been able to restructure this year. Um, and it gives me a lot more security uh, financially in terms of um, the length of the contract and, and if you want to get into it, the, the, the payout. Like, the thing that I think people are a bit naive to and don't understand is that a lot of senior coaches are under six-month, nine-month um, payout. So the club could have offered me on my old deal an extra three years and I still would have only had six months. So, uh, and we saw that with Brett Ratton a couple of years ago. He signed a two-year deal and uh, a couple of months later he was gone. I, I think he got six months and that's just the, the climate at the moment for senior coaches. So this contract, um, although it, it's been painted as a one-year deal, gives me and my family a lot more security. Um, it probably takes away a bit of the distraction that was, um, you know, and the noise externally to be able to free the, the whole uh, football department and playing group up a little bit without that, that burden of getting asked about my contract every, every time they do media, um, every time they're, they're in public. So it takes away, they, uh, it takes away that as well. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really comfortable with it and the club's comfortable with it and on we go. We're not, yeah, we're taking shots through posts and Max Gorn well knows that ball was over the line, but because we haven't got the extra camera on the post along the behind line, that's what we settle for. Justin, do you have a view as to whether what we have currently is, is adequate? Well, if that's all we've got, that's what we have to stick by. And I'm a bit with Scotty, like, the, um, the goal umpires are in a difficult situation because if they... If they err on the other side and get it wrong, they'll get highly criticised and probably more criticised than what they do at the moment for being a little bit conservative. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, just deal with what we've got and if something comes along in the next couple of years to uh, quicken up the process, then introduce it. But, yeah, this is what we've got at the moment, Jared. I think, Jared, sorry to interrupt, but I think that the other thing in the context of the game, you know, Carlton, I think what is the stat? They've won their last six games by under a goal. You know, we all know Collingwood's record in tight games. You'd hate for one of those decisions to influence one of those games. So, you know, I think the goal umpires are in a very difficult position. Um, Justin, do the players need to brush up on the, the deliberate rush behind rule at the start of the fresh season? We've seen a few and obviously one was pretty graphic for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's something that I think the last couple of years has probably disappeared out of the game. We haven't seen too many of them and I think there's been three or four in the first uh, yeah, round and a half. So... Ed, uh, we had one, obviously, Matty Johnson 
yeah, probably didn't understand the situation as well as he could have. So I think he'll know it now. I don't think he'll need me to show him it in review. <laughs> Has there been a ruling for you two coaches this year where you've had to say to the players already, right, there's been a little bit of strengthening in that area. Or have you detected anywhere where there's been a tightening up of interpretation? I think prior opportunity... Prior opportunity is like a trigger on a gun. You take one step in this game and you're dead. You take two steps over there, it's OK. I think that prior opportunity is going to do a lot of people's heads. And it hasn't done it for years. Yeah, I, I think it's difficult. I, you know, I heard the crowd's understandable reaction to that decision. But just to clarify that the players are crystal clear that if you rush the ball from outside nine metres, it's going to be paid deliberate rush behind. Well, it's not crystal Just, clear. Well, Justin's nodding his head. I mean, <laughs> we, we, we know this. So it's like, it, it's really important that, that, that the fans understand it. You know, if, if that ball's inside, you know, nine metres and he's under pressure, he can rush it. If he's outside nine metres and he's not under, he can't rush it.